Get ready for unique, rare, and little-known treasures from the golden age of radio. You're listening to The Amazing World of Radio with Adam Graham. Welcome to The Amazing World of Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Well, a happy Easter to you. Uh, we're going to bring you an episode of The Great Gildersleeve. Now, we played one of these uh, around Labor Day, and that featured Harold Perry in the role of Gildersleeve. Perry left the role in 1950 to uh, star in a program for CBS called The Harold Perry Show. He got a really good deal from CBS, and he kind of had hopes of bringing the great Gildersleeve with him, but that whole franchise stayed at CBS, and Willard Waterman took over. Willard Waterman has a very similar style of voice to Perry, but uh, some of the ticks and eccentricities are different uh, between Waterman and Perry. Uh, for one thing, uh, Waterman made no attempt to, co- uh, to copy Harold Perry's, you know, trademark laugh. But in other ways, he really did carry on the role quite well, uh, through 1957 and even brought it to television. Today's program originally aired April the 9th, 1952, and the title is Easter Sunrise Service. The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company. Kraft, makers of Velveeta, the famous pasteurized processed cheese food that tastes so good and is so good for you. Yes, Velveeta is another of the Kraft family of fine foods. Foods you can depend on for delicious eating, for wholesome, healthy eating. So remember, to get the cheese food of quality, get Velveeta, the cheese food that's made by Kraft. Well, in the town of Summerfield, it's the day before Easter, and the great Gildersleeve's family is making elaborate preparations for the occasion. Marjorie has selected a new Easter outfit, Leroy has a new suit, and they've resolved to do something different this year, attend the Easter sunrise service. Of course, the great Gildersleeve hasn't heard about these early morning plans. It's something I've always wanted to do, Leroy. Yeah, it'll be keen. Boy, I can't wait to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Let's go talk to Unky. Unky! Hey, Unk, where are you? In the den, children. Are we interrupting anything? No, not at all. Just glancing through the paper. Looking for an Easter gift for Paula. Oh? Guess I could get her one of these two-pound chocolate Easter eggs. They're not too expensive. Well, if you want to be cheap, why don't you get her an Easter rabbit and let him lay the eggs? (laughs) Leroy, I'm not trying to be cheap. I'm just trying to hold down expenses. Easter's beginning to cost as much as Christmas. Speaking of Christmas, do you know what I want next time? Leroy, please. Now then, what's the purpose of this delegation? Unky, we have the most marvelous idea. Tomorrow we're going to sunrise service. Yeah, we're getting up at four o'clock in the morning. Four o'clock. We'll have a good time. Unky. Just leave quietly and come home quietly. You mean you don't want to get up at four o'clock? No. But, Unky, the sunrise will be beautiful. Marjorie, I've seen the sunrise. I worked my way through college delivering milk. (laughs) I'm going to the 11 o'clock service the way I always do. I'll need my sleep, so I'll be alert when I pass the collection plate. I don't want to drop it again. (laughs) Well, of course I can drive Leroy and Bertie to the service, but I wish you'd come along. Is Bertie going? She's singing in the choir. A hundred voices, Unk. Well, I would like to hear Bertie sing. Well, if there are 99 other voices, I wouldn't hear much of Bertie anyway. Hey, Bertie! Yes, Leroy? Unc doesn't want to go hear you sing. He don't. No, no, it isn't that, Bertie. But I intend going to the 11 o'clock service tomorrow. 
Had my day all planned, a very busy day. We all have a busy day ahead, Unky. Yeah, I know Bertie's going to be busy. Bertie's going to sing like an angel at sunrise, then she's going to fly home and bake the ham. <laughs> you ought to see Bertie's choir robe, Unky. Really? Oh, it'll be a beautiful spectacle, Unky. Cedar Hill will be banked with flowers. Yes, I read about that. Well, I've been there every year, and it's worth it just to hear those trumpets when the sun comes up. It is, Bertie? Oh, Easter's such a thrilling day. And, Unky, you'll see all the beautiful women in their new spring dresses. Hey. Well, if you children insist. <laughs> Cowboy, Unc. Glad you changed your mind, Mr. Killsleeve. Well, I didn't exactly change my mind. I've been considering going for some time, but I wanted to be sure all of you were willing to get up at four o'clock as I am. Oh, brother. <laughs> Say, look at Peavy's window. All decorated for Easter. The, that rabbit holding the talcum powder looks just like Judge Hooker. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll go in. I still don't have a gift for Paula. Hello, Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you this morning? Peavy, what would make a nice Easter gift for Paula Winthrop? Well, Easter's usually a little chilly. How about a hot water bottle? <laughs> no, Pete. Mm. How about some perfume? Perfume? Women like to dress up for Easter, and a good perfume like this is the crowning touch. How much is it, Pete? Twelve dollars an ounce. That's the crowning touch. <laughs> well, what the heck? Wrap it up. It's Easter. Very mm, well. Planning a big day, are you? Yes, indeed. Peavy, guess what important official is getting up at four o'clock in the morning for the sunrise service? Reverend McNair? <laughs> well, he's got to be there. I'm thinking about a fellow who's just volunteering. <laughs> you don't say. Yep, I'm taking the little family. And then I'm passing the collection plate at the 11 o'clock service, too. Well, good for you. I went to both services one Easter. Is that so? I didn't sleep the night before, not wanting to miss the sunrise service, and by 11 o'clock, my eyes were so red, I wore dark glasses to church. You did? And you know what the minister did? He lectured me for staying out all night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. But Mrs. Peavy and I always enjoyed the sunrise services. Of course, it's usually a little foggy at that hour, but... Well, I haven't been up at that hour since I was an air raid warden. <laughs> Well, you'd better take a flashlight. There's a tendency to bump into trees. Oh? And if you're showing off a new suit, you, well, take a cushion along. Peavy, I'm not the sort of person who just goes somewhere to show off. I'm wearing my old blue serge. Yeah, you can't hurt that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. It's quite a climb up Cedar Hill, Mr. Gildersleeve. Are you trying to discourage me, Peavy? Oh, my, no. I, I consider it quite a rewarding experience. In fact, Mrs. Peavy and I would be going again this year if she could stand the track again. Uh, settling for the 11 o'clock service, are you, Peavy? Yes, but between you and me and the gatepost, I'd rather get up at 4 o'clock and go with you than go to the 11 o'clock with Mrs. Peavy. Well, I don't follow you. Well, she insists on wearing her new Easter bonnet. What's the matter with it, Peavy? <laughs> well, <laughs> that bad, huh? Big words. It's one of those dove-on-the-nest affairs. Oh. Mr. Gildersleeve, I don't mind having people point at Mrs. Peavy's hat, but when bird dogs start pointing... <laughs> Peavy, it can't be that bad. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Well, Gildersleeve, you're ready for the sunrise service. I wonder if I will need this flashlight Peavy sold me. <laughs> Who's that? Oh, the judge. Here I am, Diogenes. <laughs> judge, what do you mean, Diogenes? With that flashlight, you must be looking for an honest man. Here I am. All right, Judge. Hop in. I'll take you home. Thanks, Horace. That's where I'm headed. Gildy. Why are you carrying a flashlight in the middle of the day? No, I need it in the morning. I'm getting up at four o'clock. You're going to the sunrise service? You bet. 
Then I'm going to the 11 o'clock service. Well, you must have a new suit you want to display. Judge, you're as bad as Pete. I'm not going to church just to show off my clothes. Besides, I don't have a new suit to show off. I see. Here's a bump, Gildy. <laughs> what bumped me in the back of the head? That's my canteen. Canteen? What is all this junk in the back of your car? Thermos bottles, blankets, folding chairs, and a buffalo robe. Judge, where are you going? On a safari? I'm taking Miss Matterhorn to the sunrise service. Well, do you need all this equipment? Well, you have to prepare for it. You're not just taking a flashlight, are you? Well, I... Besides what I have in the car, Miss Matterhorn is packing a lunch basket. Lunch basket? The road to Cedar Hill is narrow, Gildy. And with several hundred cars up there, it takes hours to get home. Miss Matterhorn and I enjoy the service, then spread our lunch and listen to the singing birds and the clash of bumpers. <laughs> hmm, that 11 o'clock service looks better and better. But, Unky, I thought it was all settled that you'd go. No, mind you, they can conduct the sunrise service without me. You and Leroy and Bertie go and enjoy yourselves. I don't know why you don't go. My dear, I might not get back in time to pass the plate at the regular service. Judge says traffic is pretty heavy out there. Unky, you've just cooled off on the idea. Well, I'll admit I'm not as keen about it as I was this morning. Why? Well, Peavy and the judge nettled me. They accused me of going just to show off my new Easter suit. But you don't have a new Easter suit. Hmm. You just don't want to miss out on your sleep, that's all. That has nothing to do with it. I'm staying home as a matter of principle. All right, Unky, if that's your final decision... That's my final decision. I did it! <laughs> All right, Bertie. Hello, Bertie. Good afternoon, Miss Winthrop. Come in. Oh, thank you. Well, it's Paula. Hello, Throckmorton. Marjorie. Hello, Mrs. Winthrop. Paula, I was about to come over and pay you a visit. Oh, really? I have a little Easter gift for you. Well, that's very thoughtful of you. But why don't you give it to me early tomorrow morning? Early tomorrow morning? Uh-huh. Leroy told me you're all going to sunrise service. He did? Well... Would it be terrible of me if I invited myself to go along? Oh, Leroy, Bertie, and I'll be delighted to have you go with us. Uh, Paula, I had no idea you planned to go to the service. Oh, I wouldn't miss it. Marjorie, you should see my Easter suit. Oh, I want to. It's blue pastel file with pique collar, cuffs, and gloves to match. Oh, it must be darling. It sounds great. What the heck is file? <laughs> <laughs> and that isn't all. I have matching pique shoes and hat with file trim. Oh, how wonderful. Oh, Easter's thrilling. What are you wearing, Marjorie? Well, I have the cutest linen dress with a full skirt and fitted top, and it has eyelet trim. Very smart. Yeah, I can see this is no conversation for a man. Oh, oh throughout, Morton. Here we are talking about our new outfits and not letting you get a word in. Well. I know you're going to be so handsome in your new Easter suit. Handsome? Well, thank you. I like to see men dress up. You know, people don't just look at the pretty girls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you got a powder blue pinstripe. I just love them. Well, I must go. See you bright and early in the morning, Throckmorton. Yes, indeed, Paula. Bright and early. Bye-bye, Marjorie. Uh, goodbye, Paula. Unky, I thought you decided not to go to the service. You going after all, Miss Gilsleeve? And why shouldn't I go? Miss Winthrop talking him into it, Miss Marjorie. She had nothing to do with it. <laughs> no, sir. I thought you weren't going because of what the judge and Mr. Peavy thought. Why should I worry about what the judge and Peavy think? I'll put on my new suit and go. You don't have a new suit. Well, I'll get one. A powder blue pinstripe? Well, I had that in mind anyway before Paula mentioned it. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> the great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. Keeping the food budget in line is a mighty good trick these days, if you can do it. And if you've been having difficulty, here's an idea to help you out. You can make really thrifty main dishes with Velveeta. 
Kraft's smooth, melting, pasteurized, processed cheese food. Velveeta is simply wonderful in casseroles, souffles, omelets, and for a smooth, golden cheese sauce that's perfect so many ways with bits of meat or seafood, vegetables, or just poured over toast. And this Velveeta sauce couldn't be easier to make. All you do is melt a half pound of Velveeta in the top of your double boiler. Watch how quickly it melts without any lumps at all. Then gradually stir in a third of a cup of milk, season, and serve. Mmm, how the folks will go for this golden beauty of a cheese sauce. And no wonder. It's delicious because Velveeta gives it such a grand, rich, yet mild cheddar flavor. And Velveeta makes this sauce nourishing because Velveeta is rich in high-quality, complete protein, as well as other important food values from milk. And Velveeta is digestible as milk itself. Get Velveeta tomorrow in the two-pound loaf so you'll have plenty for snacks and sandwiches as well as hearty, good-to-eat main dishes that'll help stretch your food budget. Just be sure you see the name Velveeta on the package you buy. Remember, Velveeta is the cheese food of top quality made only by Kraft. Well, the great Gildersleeve had decided not to attend the Easter sunrise service with his little family when his girlfriend Paula Winthrop came over and mentioned how handsome he'd look in his new suit. Of course, the great man didn't have a new suit, but that was two hours ago. Isn't Uncle home yet, Bertie? Not yet, Miss Marjorie. He's probably having trouble finding a suit. Well, he shouldn't have waited till the afternoon before Easter. No, ma'am. I never saw a man change his mind so fast. <laughs> Neither did I, Bertie. First he said he wasn't going, and then he said he was. Then he said he wasn't because he's afraid somebody would think he was showing off a new suit he bought, which he wasn't because he didn't. <laughs> That's funky. Then he said he was because Miss Winthrop thought he'd look handsome in a new suit, which he didn't have, but which he would if he had it. So I hope he gets it. <laughs> oh, so do I, Bertie. Ah, Oh, my hair's in curlers. I don't want to be seen like this. Never mind a good guilty. Yeah, thanks, Bertie. What you got in the box, Mr. Gilsleeve? Your new suit? Yep. Unky, why'd you ring the doorbell? Well, seems that when I tried on my new suit, I left my keys in it. I was excited, I guess. Oh, open the box, Unky. Let's see what you picked out. All right. I get rid of some of this wrapping twine. Hey, what? Hello, Leroy. Hi. Well, maybe I can help you, Auntie. What's going on? I sure am anxious to see that. Uh, so am I, but what am I anxious to see? <laughs> What's in there? Leroy, keep your shirt on. Uh, did you get the one with the stripe? Yeah, white stripe. What's in there, a pole cat? <laughs> <laughs> Leroy, don't be silly. I'm not. I'm just trying to find out something. I can't untie this knot. Where's my pen knife? Mr. Gilsey, how'd you get it so fast? I practically had to grab it and run. Run with what? It, it still has to be let out, Bertie. Well, take the lid off and let it out. <laughs> well, let's see what's in there. There, there it is. Isn't that a beauty? Oh, it's beautiful, Unky. Ain't that something? Oh, for corn's sake, nothing but a suit. My Easter suit, Leroy. I thought you weren't going to buy an Easter suit. Well, I... Marjorie, how do you like this necktie I bought to go with it? Well, it's very striking, Unky. It should be with those baseball bats on it. <laughs> Leroy, they're not baseball bats. It's just a modern design. And he got the part of blue suit. <laughs> you don't think he'd come home with anything else after what Mrs. Winthrop said, do you? Ah, oh, so that's why you bought a suit. You want Mrs. Winthrop to see you in it. Leroy, that isn't it at all. There'll be hundreds of other people who'll see me in it, too. Yeah, I mean, Bertie, you suppose you can give me a hand with a few alterations? The tailor couldn't get it ready today. Yes, sir. Of course, it's a little late, and I got to take him in my choir robe. Well, I guess I am upsetting things a little. Well, if we're going to get up at 4 o'clock, we should be getting to bed soon. Yeah, I got a lot of things to do. So have I. But I'll help you with Unky's suit, Bertie. Yes, ma'am. Well, now, let's not make a big thing of this. What we need is a little organization, and I'll be the organizer. Sure. We all have things to do, so let's do them. Bertie, you go do the things you have to do. Yes, sir. Marjorie, you and Leroy get the things done that you have to do. All right, Unky. What are you going to do? I'm going to set the alarm for 4 o'clock and go to bed. <laughs> what a character. Leroy, there'll be a lot of things to do in the morning, and I'll be up bright and early doing them.
Who's... Who's your answer? Who's your It's four o'clock. You said you were going to get up and start doing things. First thing I'm going to do is turn off this alarm and go back to sleep. Where is the darn thing? Look out. You're pushing it off the table. Oh, my goodness. Make it stop. Step on the thing, Leroy. Do something. It's hiding from me under the bed. I got it. Oh, thank you, my boy. Good night. Good night? It's Easter morning. We're going to the sunrise service, remember? Sunrise? Oh, yes. Up, everybody. Rise and shine. Marjorie, Bertie, Leroy, up. Are you kidding? Everybody's up but you. Who? <laughs> oh? Don't sit there in bed shouting, rise and shine. <laughs> Can't be far. The way traffic is slowing down, Leroy. Such a winding road. A little rough, too. Mm. Paula, I hope your Easter outfit isn't getting rumpled. It's so beautiful. I'm fine. You look lovely. How can you tell? It's dark. <laughs> oh, Leroy. Marjorie, how are you and Bertie doing? All right, Unky. I just hope Bertie isn't going to be late to join the choir. Oh, don't worry about Bertie. We'll make it. We'd be there now if Unc hadn't spent ten minutes tying his tie. Well, Leroy had to get it right. This is Easter, you know. Are you stopping, Unky? As far as we can go, Marjorie. Cars are all parked ahead of us. Well, let's get out and start hiking. Unky, aren't we awfully far away? No, my dear, I'll get you there. Just follow me. I know a shortcut. We got plenty of time. There's no sign of a sunrise yet. I can't see a thing in this fog. Hey, Unc, where's your flashlight? Flashlight? Last night, I put it right where I could lay my hands on it this morning. And you don't know where you put it? Yes, I do. It's right on the dresser at home. <laughs> Come on, everybody. Follow me. since we left the car. Well, Leroy, not many people know about this shortcut, I guess. Anki, do you know where you're taking us? Of course I do, I think. Sure. This is the top of the hill, right here. This is the top of the hill? But what hill? <laughs> this don't look like Cedar Hill to me. We came up the back way, Bertie. Oh, we certainly did. Oh, what a climb. Where is everybody, Hunky? Well? Hey, the fog's lifting a little. Uh-huh, you can see up here. Look, there's the choir and everybody. Where? Across the ravine on the other hill. <laughs> Half a mile away. Oh, fine. Uncle Mort, you and your shortcuts. Oh, I'm afraid Bertie will never make it in time to sing in the choir. I'm sorry, Bertie. Very sorry. Oh, they'll get along without Bertie. We'll just have to watch things from up here. Hey, there's a lot of moving around. What are they getting ready to do? They're going to have a pageant, Leroy, telling the story of Easter. Yeah? Here we are, all dressed up, and we can't be with the crowd. What an Easter. Well, Mr. Gillsleeve, there was only a few on hand the first Easter when they saw the rock was rolled away. Well, that's right, Bertie. We shouldn't forget that. I guess nobody there put much importance on fine clothes. Well, I guess they didn't. Listen, they're playing music. They're getting ready to sing about the crucifixion. Oh, Bertie, you were going to sing that. Yes, ma'am. Will you sing it for us, Bertie? We'd like to hear it, Bertie. Would you? I'd like to. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? 
Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they lost, but we found the true spirit of Easter. Look, Unc, the sun's rising. It's a new day. That's the meaning of Easter. A new day and new hope for the world. Gildersleeve will be with us again in just 30 seconds. What do you look for in a snack food? Good, pleasing flavor? Of course. But as guardian of your family's health, mother, you want that snack food to be wholesome, too. Good for them. So get Velveeta, Kraft's famous pasteurized processed cheese food, and let your family enjoy snacks that are delicious and nourishing. Velveeta is rich in important food values from milk that everyone needs. Remember, for perfect snacks, Velveeta, the quality cheese food made only by Kraft. This is Gildersleeve again. Thanks to Bertie and the children, our little journey to the mountaintop for the Easter sunrise was a very wonderful experience. I hope that for each one of you, this Easter will bring renewed faith in the promise he gave to all of us. Renewed strength to follow his light through these days when the forces of darkness endeavor to confuse our path. Thank you all. Bertie, your song was lovely. Thank you, Mr. Gilsey. Good night, everybody. See you next week. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, William Sobronsky, Gene Bates, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. 
This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. There are two kinds of delicious Kraft prepared mustard. Mild Kraft mustard, smooth and delicately spiced, and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. And whichever you prefer, remember, when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Try it on cold sandwiches, hamburgers, frankfurters, and cold cuts. Enjoy the wonderful sauces you can make for hot meat and vegetable courses with Kraft prepared mustard. Keep both kinds on hand and keep the whole family happy. Get mild Kraft mustard and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added at your favorite food store. Next, Groucho Marx presents You Bet Your Life on NBC. Welcome back. Great performance by uh, Lillian Randolph uh, in Singing Were You There? Uh, she would sing that when the Gildersleeve uh, television show came out and would actually end up getting a uh, gospel record album recorded. This episode is interesting because it does have, uh, actually, I think, a pretty complex structure, highlighting a few aspects of Easter celebration uh, in those days. Easter was definitely a time for new clothing and to go out in your very best. You could uh, take the tradition of the Easter parade, which was prevalent at that time. It has faded quite a bit. Uh, it, you'll still find, I think, a couple of Easter parades in the United States, but they are not nearly as well attended as they once were. Uh, and then I think when you do get to the end, it's Gilder Sleeve is different than a lot of uh, programs. Uh, with many programs, it is just, you know, straight comedy throughout. And then you have other programs like Fibber McGee and Molly and Life with Luigi, where uh, episodes that are going to be serious have this really earnest uh, uh, undertone throughout. Gilder Slave was a series that would be, you know, mostly comedic from start to finish, and then you get to the final three or four minutes, and it comes with its point, which I kind of feel is a bit more uh, effective approach to it, with this point to the true meaning of Easter. And it definitely fit its times. Uh, it was aired uh, with the Korean War going on. This sort of dark and troubling time as America once again found itself at war. I really did find some resonance for me as well, you know, listening to it in this current era where we're dealing with this pandemic. Many of the things portrayed are not even options right now. Fancy clothing stores are closed throughout the country, and for that matter, few of us will have the opportunity to attend church in person this year. But it still resonates, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Well, we were going to sign off uh, on the Amazing World of Radio until we started our summer series uh, coming up around Memorial Day. Because the current pandemic has meant a postponement in the Major League Baseball season, we're going to bring baseball back on the Amazing World of Radio. Starting on Wednesday, we'll bring you one baseball-related uh, program per week for the next uh, six weeks. Before we start into our uh, Patreon-voted summer series, and that will actually be all for now. If you do have a comment, email to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. See you back here on Wednesday with the first episode in our baseball series. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.